This is Russia's brand new fifth generation submarine, the Belgorod. It's the world's largest sub in active use today. But is more bigger really more better? You might have heard it referred to by its menacing nickname, Moscow's Doomsday Submarine, because of its main weapon, the Poseidon Intercontinental Nuclear Torpedo, that Russia claims can trigger a tsunami to destroy entire coastal cities. Sounds like a Tom Clancy novel I would read half of. This new weapon comes at a time when Russia Russia has withdrawn from a global treaty that banned nuclear weapons testing and made numerous threats of nuclear retaliation. So is the Belgorod really some new kind of super weapon, or is it all just Russian propaganda designed to scare you into locking your door and never going outside again? Joke's on them, I do that anyway. Remember guys, tonight is your last chance to win this brand new Kawasaki KLR650S, provided by our partner, veteran-owned small business, GetInterToWin.com. This bike has a dual sport 652cc single cylinder engine that allows you to cruise at freeway speeds and navigate trails effortlessly. This Kawasaki KLR650 is the civilian version of the KLR250 used by the military, powered by one of the most reliable and trusted engines in the industry. So whether you're cruising through the Rocky Mountains or cruising to work, this machine provides military grade performance. But remember, your chance to win ends tonight, so click the link in the description and hurry over to go.getintertowin.com slash task and purpose. You can support my channel and our ability to keep making the content you love just by clicking the link and scooping up a custom mug to get automatically entered to win. Hurry up though, the deadline to enter is tonight at 11.59 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You also must be a U.S. resident to claim the prize. Good luck. Let's put our existential dread about nuclear Armageddon aside for just a second so we can take a look at its unique strategy. I like to think of the Belgorod sub as an underwater mothership because while most submarines serve as a launching platform for direct attacks, the Belgorod launches other independent crafts as well. These include their artificial intelligence assisted nuclear torpedoes, underwater recon drones, and even other smaller submarines. It's the world's most dangerous underwater Russian nesting doll. All of these systems are launched from the Belgorod and either return to it once their mission's complete or are recovered later by separate vessels that are operated by the 110 crew members on board the sub. If you're looking for underwater cryptids like the Megalodon, this would be a very useful tool. But while all of these are significant capabilities, there's one problem for Russia. For context, the United States Navy has 18 of their Ohio-class submarines. Meanwhile, Russia has only one of these Belgorod bad boys. Russia historically is very conservative with its deployment of their latest generation tech, like their Su-57 jet or their T-14 tank. And the utilization of them is generally a big enough deal to mark accounts across all of the media. That said, there's only one Belgorod. Anytime we observe it making any movement whatsoever, this could be an indication of a massive military move on Russia's part. That's why when the submarine simply leaves its normal port and pokes its head outside, we see it making news headlines around the world. It's basically the Taylor Swift of the military world, unable to get any moment of privacy. But why didn't Russia create a whole family of Belgorods so that this one wouldn't be lonely at the end of the world? The reason the KC-139 is an unconventional one-off design goes back to its development origins. The vessel's development history takes us through a fascinating period starting in the Soviet Union, spanning three decades until it was officially commissioned in July of 2022. On July 24th, 1992, if we go all the way back in time, the Russian Navy began Project 949A under Oscar II SSGN program. It originally set out to create a series of guided missile submarines that would be used to engage American aircraft carrier battle groups. In 1995, the Russian Navy they started to train and hand-selected a crew for the upcoming submarine in Obyansk, Russia. Obnitsk was chosen because the nuclear reactor of the submarine would power the entire region and it would simultaneously be used to train sailors on naval nuclear reactors. Project 949A was on track until 1997 when the Russian Ministry of Defense suddenly put the project on hold. This was primarily due to economic reasons because believe it or not, it's tough to spend money on fancy new submarine weapons after the empire had just collapsed just a few years prior. 
Unlike many projects at the time, there was still this expectation that it would eventually be completed. And the selected crew members continued to train for several months even after the project was suspended. The half-built hull of the Belgorod would spend the rest of the 1990s inside the Severovensk machine shop shipyard just north of Moscow. Sevmash, for short, by all accounts, is the premier shipyard for Russia for producing their latest naval technologies at the highest absolute quality. In September 2000, a series of discontinued military projects in Russia were given a second look. Putin, entering his second year as Russian Prime Minister, pushed an agenda of revamping the Russian military. And the Project 949A is renamed at this point to Project 949AM. M for modern. But it turns out that simply adding a letter to your project name isn't enough to keep it going, because no actual added funding was officially allocated to it. While the revamping of the Belgorod was part of a modernization effort, the 2000s decision to continue construction was largely due to the accidental sinking of its sister ship, the Kursk. Gradually, funds would make their way to the project slowly, but by 2004, only the outer metal hull was completed. In 2006, India came around and offered to pay for the remainder of the submarine to be built if, on the condition, that it could lease it for a few years. But Russia rejected the offer. This left India both heartbroken and submarineless. Three more years would pass, and once again the project is frozen in 2009 due to a lack of funding. The Russians realize that the original design that first began in the 90s is going to be outdated by the time if it ever gets built. And so they began to revamp the overall design using newer technologies. Looking at the original design though, it tells us what we can expect from the newer one and what it'll try to do. The Belgorod and the ships originally meant to follow it were Russia's answer to NATO's massive naval advantage. From the beginning, the Belgorod's purpose was to wipe out aircraft carriers and their escort ships. It would have done this using 24 of the P-700 Granite anti-ship missiles. All 24 missiles would be launched simultaneously once within about 100 miles of a carrier strike group. One missile would be designated as the leader flying over 1,000 meters into the air where it would activate this radar scanner that would detect and relay targeting data on American warships back to the other 23. If that leader happened to be intercepted, another missile could be designated to take its place. The missiles reach a top speed of about Mach 1, skimming just above ocean level, and near simultaneously hit all targets. Mind-boggling technology for the 1980s. Would it have worked? Uh, well, hopefully we'll never find out whether or not it works. But what it tells us, for sure, is that the Belgorod's primary job was at an aircraft carrier killer. And that's its primary role that we can expect to see it to carry out in the future. On the 10th of February 2012, Admiral Vladimir Vetsovsky announces that the Belgorod will once again be under construction at the Sevmash shipyard. Shortly after deeming third time's a charm, it's determined that the Belgorod will be the only submarine of its kind, becoming Project 09852 as a special purpose submarine. While Navy crews once again began training to pilot the submarine, operational responsibility was handed over to the GUGI, or Russia's main directorate deep sea research organization. While that sounds like a group that would be looking for new types of fish or giving tours of the Titanic wreckage, it's actually Russia's naval special forces. GUGI is tasked with underwater espionage, special reconnaissance, sabotaging pipelines, and wiretapping fiber optic cables cables, or really anything that would make it into a Tom Clancy book. If you would combine the Cold War carrier killer capabilities with the Secret Squirrel GUGI mission set, you ultimately land upon the design that was chosen to go forward with. Between 2013 and 2018, the original hull that had been sitting in the shipbuilding plant underwent a series of additions to take on new mission sets, extending the hull length by about 30 meters and becoming the largest submarine in service in the world. It's said to displace about 30,000 tons submerged and 184 meters in length or 603 feet long. And so it's basically a very heavily modified Oscar II class submarine in Russia. Only six of the original 14 Oscar II class subs are still in operation today. The extension of the hull shows what exactly the Belgorod is capable of in a 21st century maritime conflict. Take a look at the 2M39 Poseidon intercontinental nuclear-powered nuclear-armed autonomous torpedoes, each the size of a friggin' school bus, 
reportedly produced by Rubin Design Bureau, it claims to operate at 1,000 km and it says it can travel a distance of 10,000 km and claims to have the capability to hit any coastal target that touches the Atlantic Ocean. Wait a second, I'm on the Atlantic Ocean, not cool. That would be the world's largest torpedo ever created with a top speed of over 100 km. The guidance sensors have obstacle avoidance sensors to track the target. The way the world first became aware of this weapon is very telling. It happened by accident during a broadcast by a Russian state-run television channel on November 10th, 2015. A page of a document was leaked during the broadcast when one general was seen studying a diagram of the torpedo system. The leak happened at a very strange, coincidental moment in the program when Russian President Putin was making a speech that happened to be denouncing the United States government and their plans to create a global anti-missile defense system that he was opposed to. This created speculation that the Russian military and Putin purposely leaked info about the torpedo weapon as a kind of tacit threat. The CIA even claims that the leak was intentional. I now leave it up to you as to whether or not you want to believe Putin or the CIA. Discuss amongst yourselves. We'll get into the debate about whether or not this weapon system really works, but let's put our skeptic hats on the table for just a second and assume that the weapon truly works as it claims to. What does that mean? These warheads are unlike anything anyone else has in their arsenal. The Poseidon is an autonomous, AI-enhanced, nuclear-powered warhead. Reports of the potential blast yield range up to 100 megatons, but ultimately it would be fit to match whatever target the torpedo is set to hit. Larger payloads for coastal or land-based targets such as shipyards or cities, smaller payloads for taking out NATO fleet formations. Poseidon torpedoes are essentially underwater loitering nuclear munitions. The six Poseidons use GLONASS, which is like Russia's version of GPS, and AI navigation to roam in and around target areas undetected for up to seven months. This is due to them being nuclear propulsed, meaning that their fuel source itself can last up to 20 years, while the torpedo itself needs maintenance at least every seven months. The reason this claim raises some suspicion, it's a little bit sus, is because it's very difficult to fit that capability in something as small as the Poseidon. Once those seven months are up, the torpedo can navigate itself back to friendly waters for recovery by Russian naval forces. After recovery, the torpedo is serviced and placed back into use once again. I barely even like the idea of fish, so I don't like the idea of atomic torpedoes swimming around out there when no one can see them. These torpedoes would be controlled by the main submarine. Unlike the original 1990s, and that design, where one salvo could kill one carrier group, a momentous feat, a theoretical salvo now has the power to take out potentially six, or at the very least, provide redundancy. The United States, in effect, is able to track any and every missile launched on Earth, and by extension, intercept them. What we can't do is track torpedoes thousands of feet under the water reliably. And even if we could, they would be very difficult to intercept without a massive prior warning. The Poseidon, however, is still deep in the testing phase and many of its capabilities are still unproven, but not impossible. Russian sources claim it uses stealth tech to avoid sound tracking devices that the US deploys throughout the oceans. It does this by traveling at slow speeds once it gets within three kilometers of the target. This Russian source claims it will only be detectable in the final stages because it imitates the noise of civilian ships. And the Russian Navy plans to create 30 of these torpedoes. Some of the more outlandish rumors even suggest its explosion would trigger a tsunami, which experts believe to be Russian propaganda because a 100 megaton blast close to shore isn't large enough to do that. And so on January 16, 2023, the Russian media group TASS reported that the first batch of these torpedoes were completed. But there's a number of different pieces of evidence to suggest the torpedoes do not function as intended. On November 10, 2022, US intelligence sources told CNN that they monitored the Belgorod attempting to test out their new weapon system when they failed to launch it and then return back to base. We know the Russian military has faced widespread weapons failures in their invasion of Ukraine, where intelligence officials claim 60% of their precision-guided missiles failed to strike their intended target. Another example of a supposed capability that has never been observed is the supercavitation technology that the Russian military claimed to have. Supercavitation creates faster torpedoes that don't have any drag, which would outclass Western systems. But there's been no observed proof of that existing. It's never a good idea to underestimate your enemies, but a healthy spoonful of skepticism 
will help us keep our heads on straight. James Mack is retired United States Navy, and he had this to say about his skepticism of the weapon system, the torpedo. Quote, but even a torpedo as large as a Poseidon does not have room for all this equipment that Russia claims to have in there. There are ways around some of this, but those produce massive amounts of waste heat and leave a rather clear thermal trail for a number of satellites, not just military versions. While a Poseidon has no crew, it supposedly uses a highly advanced AI and positioning system, but a reactor on the scale claimed would require significant shielding to protect those electronics. Doing so would place additional limits on the torpedo. So it could exist, but not likely with all of the claimed capabilities. Russia has a tendency to create weapon systems that don't exactly live up to the hype or are produced in such small numbers that they don't make a realistic impact on the battlefield. Another questionable capability is that the Belgorod is supposed to be a launching platform for the AS-31 Low Shark, or Little Shark submarine. I can only imagine this is where the catchy song Baby Shark came from, which is a weapon of mass destruction all on its own. This smaller submarine is is designed for deep water research, which if you ask me, is just code name for underwater espionage. It has a series of mechanical appendages on the underside to splice into underwater internet lines, cut fiber optic cables, and drop hydrophones to listen for foreign subs. But the problem here is that in 2019, the Low Shark was undergoing trials when it had a catastrophic battery failure off the northern Russian coastline, killing 14 of the crew. That capability has been shelved until 2025 at the earliest, and the death of Russia's Little Shark program also cancels its third payload that was meant to be a nuclear power plant that could be staged underwater to power their surveillance systems. Russia's Harmony surveillance system is a network around the world's oceans for monitoring US naval ships, so that was canceled too. Whether the Belgorod has these capabilities or not, launching these torpedoes is the primary role the Belgorod is meant to play. Why is it so important for Russia that this is a real thing? As it stands, Russia lacks the capability to conduct global deterrent patrols and generally sends its submarine fleet on the European side of the Atlantic Ocean. By claiming to have this specific capability, these nukes essentially fill the same role as the American Boomer submarines, but for a fraction of the cost and allegedly far less logistics. But what about its detection capabilities? Because without that, this thing would be dead in the water. Take a look at the front of the Belgorod's hull. That's where the Irtysh Amphoria B055 radar is located. It's supposed to be able to track 30 targets at the same time, while monitoring enemy ballistic launches. If you believe Russian sources, this radar outranges American sonar systems by 100 kilometers. Powering all these systems is the two separate OK-650M-02 pressurized water nuclear reactors that deliver 190 megawatts of power. They move the giant steam turbines and open source numbers claim that it lets the submarine go 37 miles per hour based on known speeds of the Oscar II type sub with the same power plant. How deep can it go before it bursts its bubble? It maxes out at 520 meters below sea level, but operational depths are rumored to go much deeper. The vessel can stay underwater for 120 days, at which point their main adversary isn't the US Navy, it's going sea crazy. If you think all of this sounds impossible, remember that Russia has threatened to sabotage underwater cables frequently. Despite being officially entered into service in April of 2019, many of the Belgorod's technologies that are associated with it are still under development, with their specialized torpedoes not expected to be completed, really, until 2027. The Belgorod itself has only conducted limited excursions outside of its home port, primarily past the Arctic Circle, for dummy torpedo firing testing. That said, it has still sparked a serious response from the NATO states, with the United States establishing a new Navy task force to hunt submarines, and Norway's increasing submarine hunting patrols. Russia obviously, having known this, has primarily kept Belgorod in its home port, with the latest satellite imagery showing it hasn't left port since April of this year. Make sure you like and subscribe, because if its weapon capabilities turn out to be real and Russia destroys the entire Atlantic coast of America where I live, you'll want to hear that update from me first. And remember guys, tonight is your last chance to win the Kawasaki KLR650 motorcycle. I'm already jealous of the lucky winner that I'm going to be shipping it to soon. Click the link in the description or the pinned comment below for your chance to enter. But it ends tonight at 11.59 Pacific Time, so head over to go.getentertowin.com and good luck, spare parts army.